All right. So we've just uh, we've just talked to Ramona, and Ramona has given us uh, her authority to use the weather uh, ROM, and I'm pretty sure we're gonna make it snow. <laughs> you can gaze out the window. All right, let's uh, let's leave. Right. Hi, drone. Multiple different climate control settings. Maybe we could make things a little more festive. Christmas is my favorite season. Should I switch it to snow mode? Yeah, turn this baby on! Look at it go, it's so cute. Make it snow. Ah, look at that pixelated snow. It's... it's snowing? Okay, people. I, for one, didn't bring any winter wear. Let's call it a day for now. Yeah. Deactivating snow mode. Excellent work, Skinny. Yeah, thank you. While I still have the doubts about the moral superiority of using subterfuge to disperse a protest, we at least accomplished our goal peacefully. And to be frank, considering how the human revolution- look at the cat- is clearly working against my personal interests. I won't waste many clock cycles puzzling that ethical quandary out. Skinny. Might I draw your attention to those youths over yonder? Counterculture clothing, obvious bad attitudes, and graffiti paraphernalia. Those could be our suspects for creating mischief under the guise of social change. Maybe. Wouldn't hurt to check him out. We should approach them cautiously as not to start a confrontation with the wrong individuals. They may even point us to the true culprits. Oh no, they've noticed our attention. Come along, Skinny. Maybe we can catch them. Wow, oh, they run like Cowboy Bebop characters. The animation in this is really good. I know it seems like a great deal of trouble for such a tenuous lead, but I have a hunch about them. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. Ah, the auto cab is estimated to take five minutes to arrive. God damn it, Uber. We'll never be able to engage in pursuit fast enough to catch up to them. Perhaps we should talk Tomcat. Maybe they can do some techno wizardry and stop that cab. It's better than nothing. Um, yeah, no, good idea. Ring him up. Excellent. Hold on while I connect us. Well, howdy, folks. How's the search for the data cache going? Actually, that's what we're calling about, Tomcat. We may have located the people who took it, but they eluded us and are making their escape in an auto cab. We attempted to use a cab of our own to tail them, but traffic is congested and they're getting away. Can you hack the cab to stop it? Huh, no can do, little guy. The security on those cabs is tied in Fort Knox, and the dang thing will shut down its external net connection long before I get in. But I have an idea. Sit tight for just a sec. All right, that went faster than spit on a skillet. I love you, Tomcat. I did a job a few years back and had to break into the city's central traffic network for reasons best left up to speculation. Those fools left the back door I put in wide open. I'm logging in the traffic management system now. Wait. Oh, shit. They may not have fixed the back door, but they installed a new counter-intrusion VI. Oh, damn, thing's hot on my tail. Your fake accent's pretty inconsistent, Tomcat. Well, no shit, Skinny. I'm from Napa Valley. Maybe we can save the criticisms of my particular jocular quirks for another time, though? I'm gonna need the two of you to handle the traffic system. Turing, I'm passing control to you. You should be able to use your map app to keep track of them and redirect their cab back to you. Do I smell a minigame? Ooh, I hope I do. You should be able to trick their cab's GPS system and think of the shortest route goes right back past you. You just gotta stop them at the light whereby there by y'all. I'll put a marker on the map for you. If you stop and trap them anywhere else, they'll just get out and run away, so be careful. Hold on tight, I'm gonna be doing some two sets of hands on one keyboard kinda hacking. Just hurry, I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to keep this VI from messing up the car messing on the carpet. Once I kill the connection, this little trick is over. I'm dead certain you'll find the back door after this. Just push on the map I'm loading up for Turing's face. Sorry, Turing. Oh god. How do I... I'll tap into the control node they're currently arriving at. The top priority is sure they cannot leave the area Tom gets given us access to. I'll mark the southern exit as closed first. 
two roots at a time before the VI will make a decision and move. Well, then we gotta block this way. Can't have you talking, it's messing with the signal. It's up to you now, skinny. Don't trap them anywhere until you bring them back here. Access any of the control nodes in the area. Think ahead and we should get them back here without delay. Okay, 14th and Dolores. Block that way and that way. Alright. Ooh, look at all these options. Sneaky, sneaky. Alright, so we want to block them from going off the map. So I guess we have to block these ways. Yeah. Damn it. Was that Market Street? God, it's so weird playing this after having just been in San Francisco. Uh-oh. So there's a chance they could just go off the map, because I can only get two here. So block this one and that one. We'll go ah, damn it! Shit. They're getting away! Ah, thank you. Definitely a one-shot trick. Those vias are all over the path I used. Alright. Let's try again. Don't let them escape. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's what I want. I, this one is good. Go, Taxi, go. Hmm, yeah, because I don't want them in this intersection. Tricky business. Alright, how do I get them going again? Nah, that's... Alright. <laughs> Lost connection with Tomcat. They must have cut the connection for the VI identified their IP address, but I can pull images of those kids from my memory. Perhaps we can ask someone to try to find them. <sighs> Crap. I should have saved. I don't know if the game, like, I don't think the game auto saves, so I can't go back and try that again. Alright. Um, let's ask Fairlight. That sounds like a good idea. I'll put the pictures in email and send them along to him. Maybe he can look places we wouldn't be able to. I wonder... Okay, yeah, yeah. Snow machine. That's not right. I'm certain I deactivated snow mode. Everything's all... crazy. <laughs> Alright. I'm coming call from Tomcat. I lost you there for a bit. Jess just called, told me she needs... She's got a way of the access node I need to slice clear into for you. Did you get the data cache? No luck there yet. Oh, rats. Well, you all get it, I'm sure. Well, that is an impressive word. You all will. Y'all lol. Alright, I'm gonna go in the bar. Maybe I can get drunk on Hassie. Feel better about my failure. I'll manage to trigger an alert within Parallax's network security, and they're going to be moving their logs from one secure server to another. I need y'all in place of that access node before they do. No time for lollygagging. No problem, Tomcat. We'll make our way there directly after we go to Stardust. We can worry about the weather realm's malfunction later. Let's go, Skinny. Our mission for Jess is done. No, I want to go in the bar. You don't own me, robot. She's going to be so mad. I told you jerks not to break my ROM! Now I can't get it to stop snowing! Those protests are gone, but I'm still not gonna have any customers with it freezing like this. I'm sorry. Oh, hey, who are these people? Whoa, it's getting busy up in here. This Hassie hot cup is the perfect thing to warm me up. Snow out of nowhere? I guess I'll wait it out in here. Wow, look at it out there. It's so magical. Uh, don't think I've forgiven you, you dingus. Oh, I'm a dingus. I better get some hassy hot cups going. Well, all's well that ends well, right, Skinny? I'll check the mesh for common issues with the mode selector on the 6703 ROM unit and forward the solutions to the hassy bar owner. I'm sure she'll be able to get it turned off after the customer rush. I'd be impressed if that hassy bar owner could turn anybody off. She's so cute. 
Alright. Dana. Dana, why do you look familiar to me? A light-haired teenager with a bionic arm. She seems to be staring at the nearby wrestlers. She waits to order. The character design looks so familiar. A defiant young wrestler is enjoying a fresh, hassy hot cup. A skinny hybrid with green skin and pointy ears. This wrestler is the powerhouse in a lower, local wrestling stable called the Violent Wings. A TMI Entertainment Film Assistant taking a break to enjoy a hassy hot cup. Can I talk to any of these folks? Oh, I totally can. Alright, let's, let's talk to her. Dana Zane. Those hassy hot cups are disgusting. I'm just here to see the wrestlers. Can't wait for the New Year's show. Well, howdy. You can call me Cactus Canary. I, I will. I like your hat. Oh, Dana is from Valhalla. Awesome. Um, Valhalla is, uh, is that uh, cyberpunk bartending game. I should play that, too. I usually hang out at the Stardust, but they don't serve food, so I came here for Hassy Hot Cups during the day. I really do like a good Sassy Hassy. Hassy Hot is also great. Well, I have my option to shoot him with my laser. I'm not going to. Hey there, I go by Night Witch. Night Witchy. If I was actually in charge of content, I'd make sure we did a big story on these new Hassy Hot Cups. Delish. All right, let's um. Can I get a drink from Ramona? No, that's it. Okay. Cute. A little like cross game universe stuff. Later, Dana. Oh, Sutro Tower. Sutro Tower isn't used for much anymore, but it's a beautiful reminder of the antiquated technologies of centuries past. <laughs> Should I just get some Easter egg music? God, so Blade Runner. Let's all just sit here and jam out for a minute. He say you Blade Runner. So smooth. Such jazz. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's a very good... Because it's, uh, it's like a radio tower or whatever, so we're getting... Oh, that's cute. <laughs> pretty into it. Oh, where'd that cat go? A video billboard advertising the local news. You touch the video screen. It's not a touch screen! When all the doom and the gloom of the news is said and done, we ask you, the viewer, what's okay today? What a terrible motto for a morning show. Oh my god, a, a must. Alright, I have a request from chat. I'm gonna go put on the saxophone music again if I can, and I'll, I'll answer the question. So, um, must read, must watch content for cyberpunk ideas. Um, in my opinion, seminal works of cyberpunk um, Neuromancer, uh, and then Snow Crash. Read Snow Crash after Neuromancer because Snow Crash is a bit of a response to the sort of 80s cyberpunk. Um, the, the show Mirror Shades is named after actually a really good, though I think slightly out of print, um, uh, cyberpunk, um, compilation. Uh, William Gibson has some stuff in there. Uh, go watch Blade Runner if you haven't already. Blade Runner is cyberpunk noir. It's, uh, it's my favorite movie, like, no question. Um, so watch that. Uh, if you want more, like action-y cyberpunk, uh, Terminator, the first Terminator, the first Robocop movie, they're both pretty cyberpunk, um, and, uh, Ghost in the Shell, obviously, um, and, uh, there's a little bit of sort of cyberpunk stuff in Akira, 
uh, the idea of what um, what makes us human and what human evolution is like. Um, and you see some sort of techno stuff merging in with uh, with that. Um, yeah, so there you go. Cyberpunk, my, my favorite cyberpunk and some saxophone music. Let's get out of here. All right, so we were gonna go, yeah, back to the club. Welcome to Stardust. Hey, cuties. Hey, guy who looks eerily like me. Wait, was that a crowd? No, it's, yeah, it is. Dancers on the floor. The party never stops at Stardust. Open 24 hours a day. Thank goodness for the unrestricted bar hours. All right, what am I doing here again exactly? Oh yeah, talking to Jess. How do I do that? Where's Jess? Have you seen Jess? Stranger? Oh, gee, do you know where Jess is? Hmm, maybe she's, they, I'm supposed to come here. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe I'll just dance. You work your way into the crowd and shove some of your best moves for a while. That was fun. <laughs> An obnoxious beat is even more obnoxious. Ah, rad. Bouncer? Thank you. Oh, I can't just walk in. I have to, like, ask and then... Okay. Oh my god, Caitlin, I'm sorry I bailed on you. This is exactly what I needed to get my mind off things. Oh good, she's not mad. I'm sorry. I felt a little bad about that. Hey! I heard from my friends down the street those protesters are gone. Must have been you, huh? I like your outfit, Jess. Alright then, I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt and return the favor. I called my buddy who's on night shift tonight for Parallax, watching over an access node in deep mission. Tomcat said, I wish I could spell my name in all caps. Adam. Tomcat said that if you got access to an old access node, you might be able to find out what happened to Hayden. My buddy can buzz you in, but if anything happens, you broke in. This puts us at about even. Don't think about drawing any more debits for a while. Go on, get out of here. I want to talk to you. Can we be friends? I'm sorry, Jess. Maybe one day she'll forgive me. Okay, well, let's go. Dog patch. I've been to like this whole like this whole area of SF. Like I spent my weekend there for TwitchCon. It's so weird. It's so weird just going to these places. This is the place Tomcat said we should head to. Unassuming and quiet. I'll be honest, I don't think I would be in this section of the city without Jess giving us the all clear. The crime statistics are quite alarming, so let's get done with our errand here and move to safer ground. I'm sure she will. Jess is a bit aggressive and standoffish, but I would not accuse her of being dishonest or underhanded. But I guess I did just meet her. And she is a lawyer, an occupation known for slippery thinking. Oh yeah, Jess is like a civil rights lawyer, right? I, I remember reading about that uh, before I played the game. Perhaps we should hurry this along. Tomcat is waiting for us to call them when we arrive. All right, Some creepy street art. You know, right after we found Hayden's apartment in such disarray, I started looking into graffiti and street art more thoroughly. I had never much considered doing any of it myself, but it seems like an interesting avenue to pursue once I move beyond abstract impressionism. The simpler tags, visual shoutings of identity and existence, they exhibit a feeling I can sympathize with, but it's these larger pieces, riots of color and chaos, that really interest me. 
Petty vandalism is beneath me, but there are other avenues for the practice. For example, did you know that Los Angeles, in the mid-2030s, legalized putting up mural-style street art on any building without requiring permission from the owner or city? It was the chaos of the highest degree for a while, but now the place is truly remarkable. Perhaps I will visit once all this is done with. That graffiti is actually the symbol of gonzo journalism. Ah, I hadn't even noticed. Do you have much experience with gonzo journalism yourself, reporting after or during direct participation? If you do end up writing on this experience, whatever you produce will be the very definition of it. Um, so, pioneer of gonzo journalism, amazing writer, totally fantastic human being, for the most part, kind of a fucked up dude too, uh, Hunter S. Thompson. If you're interested in um, gonzo journalism at all, he's, he's the guy. <laughs> You're too close to be objective now, and you're a key subject in this event. It doesn't seem to be your usual style, but you couldn't go another route at this point, and you're in the clear as you don't instigate the situation. Hmm, I've never had much interest in the practice, but spending so much time around you has taught me to look at events in a very different light. Perhaps only because I can verify your personal experience as fact. I'm sorry, I'm rambling again, aren't I? And we're on a schedule. I don't even want to think about this. What if we don't find Hayden? What if we do? My nerves are shot from the stress of the past day. It's already taking a toll on me. But never mind. Let's find that access node. Let's find Hayden. Gotta keep the generator cool or it will break. Beautiful turbo generator out here just generating energy. I wonder what's using all this extra power. This pipe is doing what all good pipes should do. It's piping out that energy. All right, so there's this thing. I've taken a few photos of this piece and the other vivid sight we've seen along our journey. I'm going to put together a digital scrapbook of sorts when this is all over. I'm going to show it to Hayden. Use street art. This wall is pretty grimy. Stop touching it. Ah, oh, cool. The headset augmented reality thing is so smart. Like, it's so it's so interesting and fun that I, I almost wish it was just part of the radial menu. You might can never consider. So, uh, speaking of additional, um, uh, of additional media, um, if you're looking to learn more about augmented reality, there's a book, uh, again, William Gibson book, um, called Zero History that uh, very heavily features uh, AR. Um, and you should, you should definitely, uh, definitely check that out. This is the door to the access node that Tomcat told us about. We need to figure out a way to get inside. Okay. Parallax block AN19 security. Hello? Yes. Can I help you? 23, 12, 49, 10. We're uh, friends of Jess? I was wondering when you'd get here. You're at the access node on Cesar Chavez in Indiana, right? That's right. Good. Be quick. Don't touch anything. Got it? This conversation never happened. You're on your own if you get caught there. I hope you find what you're looking for. This is it. I'll go, insi go inside and I'll call Tomcat. This place doesn't look like it's had any maintenance in years. I hope the systems are still functional. Oh, I forgot you can't see in dark lighting. Maybe that switch over there adjusts the brightness. Looks like a light switch for the room. It's currently toggled to off. The slight switch brings a little brightness into the world. It sometimes takes it away. <laughs> Heavy. Oh my god. Oh, Tomcat is pinging us, forwarding video and audio. Well, howdy. Y'all the access node? I'm set to slice in once Turing makes physical access. Of course, Tomcat. Just walk me through how to connect myself, and I'll give you the necessary system permissions to use me as an interface. Well, you just pad yourself into the Lynx terminal down there, I should be able to get you started. Connecting wirelessly to it. Now. Permissions granted. Please be careful in there. Aw, oh, y'all don't worry, I'm an old hand at this, you won't notice a thing. One second. Hmm. Looks like I have a bit more for you to do before I can get the info we need. One of them cassettes the old system here uses is missing. Happens to be the one from the recall slot. Without it, we won't be able to call up old surveillance records. Should be a cassette on the opposite side of the wall we can overwrite with a recall program. Pretty sure all that one was used for was handling phone monitoring. You know, from back when phone networks were their own thing, separate from the data network. Hmm, maybe I'm betraying my age a bit too much. 
Anyways, we need to move that cassette across the room to access the records. Figure out how to do that and hit me back up when you've done it. A list of things to check. Basically, make sure all the screens say OK before leaving the node. <laughs> wow, there are a lot of little, like, Easter eggy things in here. The sign warns the area contains high voltage. Danger, danger! Utility arm. Oh, I wanna look at the, there we go. How'd you like one of these for an arm, Turing? Is there something wrong with my arms? I was certain Hayden installed state-of-the-art prototypes. Um, I was uh, just kidding. Oh, uh, I see. Humorous. This model is extremely antiquated, though. I doubt it has anything approaching the precision of modern servomotor appendages, to say nothing of the strength. Yeah, it was a, it was a joke, Tiger. Random graphs and diagnostics being tracked. Some dangly wires. Loose hanging wires. Be careful. And now everybody is singing on <laughs> high voltage in the chat. Thank you. There's a cassette. This must be the cassette Tomcat was talking about. This is the one you need to plug in. Get it. Can't reach it from down here. Ah, I gotta use the utility arm. The utility arm. This poster has a lot of... Oh, Asmodai. Hi, welcome back. Thank you. Poster has a lot of technical details about the utility arm. Great. These aren't the cassettes you need. Dirty tangled wires. Let's pour some milk on them. <laughs> Oops, it actually did something. What's going on down there? Something shorted the main breaker. Everything switched over to the auxiliary. Oh, Mustachio, thank you. Welcome back. Try not to wreck the node before you get what you went down there for. I swear to God, if I don't kill the last boss with that spoiled milk, I don't even know what I'm gonna do. Maybe there's some other way to move this thing. Logging in to Link Server Z77 Gamma. Beep, 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 beep. Welcome to Lynx. Operate data transfer arm. Retract arm. Turn arm. Turn arm. No, turn it back. Turn arm. Move arm left. Hells yeah, extend that arm. Get the thing. Retract that arm. Yeah. Turn the arm. Move arm right. Oh, we doing it. Extend it. Yes. Nice job. Here we go, I'm in. I'm gonna put some more pressure on him to move the data now, so you can't slurp it right out of this network trunk. That sounds gross. You would have thought someone would have noticed and decommissioned this access note when the neighborhood went to hell, but... Well, this mouse is happy to play while the cat's away. You're mixing your metaphors, Tomcat. Why is this place usable for us anyway? Oh, way back when I was a young enough, first hacked into Parallels Network, I mostly did it to make a point, Yeah, you know? They are just about to launch the, launch the MeshNet system, and I wanted to show the whole darn world. Security had more holes in it than a Swiss cheese. Of course, I wasn't too shy about poking a few more holes in my own devising while I was there. After putting some more tricky software backdoors, I went ahead and deleted the access node off the maintenance schedule. Then I reassigned the guy who was supposed to keep an eye on it to a different location. They were in the process of buying up a whole gaggle of these nodes in preparation to set up a private network for themselves to use after the mesh net got up and running. Really confident of them, you know? Most of the software holes have been patched out as they've been upgrading their network, but all this old place just as forgotten as I left it. And why would they move the data? Oh well, I I've been hitting every port in the network of one of their data centers with a botnet driven direct denial of service attack. It ain't likely to do much, but toss a few attempts to crack the firewall and their VIs are shitting bricks. Standard procedure to move their data to a different center through a secured hardline in case the attacker actually gets in. Make enough noise, it'll scare them into taking some defensive action, which is right where we want them. Let us know when you're done. Y'all just hold tight, I'll be done with this lickety split. Scared face! Oh god. Uh oh, Turing. I'm so sorry. What is it, Tomcat? What did you find? Uh, he's gone, Turing. Of course he's gone, Tomcat. That's why we're here. Oh, shit, I mean, he's... Uh, 
He's gone, gone, Turing. Hayden's dead. Well, that obviously isn't right, Tomcat. Why would they kill him? Can you send me the relevant files? You must have missed something. Well, uh, okay, for sure. I found the security cam video from the hallway outside the apartment. Looks like he started to struggle when they got him out the door and... Then one of the kidnappers shot him. I, I also found some chatter about the botched raid on some darknet channels. I'm so damn sorry. Thank you for your assistance in this matter, Tomcat. Skinny. I think I'll walk back to your apartment. I need some time to run some calculations about this new scenario. If you'll excuse me. Did you follow them? Some time to myself, too. Well, if you say so. I'm gonna keep keep... I'm gonna keep digging through this data till they kick me out of the system. Try to find some kind of lead on why this whole thing started in the first place. <sighs> it ain't much of a bright spot, but it seems they ain't looking for Turing anymore. Maybe it's time to call it quits. Anyway, I, I'll talk to you later. Why? Why was I programmed to feel pain? Chapter 3 Oh, these title cards are so boss. If whoever designed the title cards is in chat right now or watching this YouTube video, thank you. <laughs> They're really nice. Skinny. Hey. How you doing? You know, Hayden was a brilliant programmer. Far ahead of his time. I am a machine. And, intrinsically, I do not have all the glands and visceral chemical reactions that makes humans so emotional and brilliant. But his code is a flawless replication of that inside my own personality algorithms. I don't think I've ever felt this... This anger. It fouls my processors and fills my RAM with frustrated, half-finished plans of revenge. I am sick with rage. I do not like the thoughts I'm having about the people who did this to him, Skinny. Okay. Can you, um, can you turn them off? I, I could. I can disable those modules. But I'd be less than myself. And... That seems too easy. If I were human, turning off my emotions would be seen as extremely unhealthy. There is a wealth of information on the mesh net about human psychology. I just don't know how much of it applies to myself. Either way, Hayden deserves my grief. It is my way of honoring him. It may be the only way I can. I... I offer it freely. Did you see the jade plant? Its death is unfortunate, but fitting. Yet another thing to be guilty for. Will you keep helping me, Skinny? I need you to find the bastards that killed my progenitor. I need to finish this. I don't know what I'll do afterward, but I need to see this through. We'll find them. And the truth, Turing. The truth? I'm not sure it matters anymore. Hayden's dead, and no amount of truth will bring him back. But... I guess you're right. Knowing the whys and wherefores will bring closure to this. I could use a measure of closure. I think for now we should keep knowledge of Hayden's death between you, Tomcat, and I. It may give us an edge if the people we seek don't know how much we've already discovered. <sighs> you should rest today. You likely need sleep, and I need some time, too. I need some time. We'll talk after you've had some time to rest. 
Yeah, this the, the game is teaching me so much. It's giving me so much fuel for Pi. So much. Oh my god, what would happen if Piani died? Good morning, Skinny. I trust you slept well? Hmm. Unfortunately, we've just about run out of leads. Perhaps Tomcat was able to find something of use in Parallax's network while they were inside. Yeah, I'm sure they did. I hope so, but I feel a little bad for relying on them as much as we do. Always going so far for Hayden. They must have been close. Oh, there's Tomcat now. Oh, speaking of them, incoming call from Tomcat. Forwarding video and audio. Morning, Skinny. Turing, how you doing, hun? I'm fine, Tomcat. Thank you for your concern. Well, oh, okay. Just say the word if I can help out in any way, you hear? Of course. In fact, I was hoping you might have a lead for us to start working at. Otherwise, we're down to canvassing Hayden's address book and seeing if any of his contacts have an idea about who might have the desire to target him. But that's just... fishing in the dark. Well, I pulled a fair amount of data from the Parallax servers before they managed to kick me out, but it'll take me a while to go through it. And a lot of it's unrelated. TPS reports, maintenance logs, all kind of internal documents that might be interesting to another corporation, but about as useful as dirt to us. Tomcat, it's called pay data, and you sell it on the Shadowrunner BBS. So, no, I don't have as much as a whiff of a trail on the people who did this. But I did get a strange request from a friend of mine, if you know what I mean. Someone's been manipulating the reports of a news outlet by the name of Augmented Eye. Seems like the head of network security has been asking around for cybercrackers to help figure out their articles are getting changed. The original files on their servers are untouched, not a thing wrong with them. But when you view the site from outside the network, some things have changed around. Word here, phrase there, nothing to really foul up the article big time, just enough to spin the meaning. Gotta be some kind of man in the middle attack. Someone with deep access to Parallel's mesh net is changing what's being shown. Bad stuff. Ain't sure if it's related, but maybe y'all can head down to the main KCOB office try to talk to their gal that runs Augmented Eye. Her name's Zen. I ain't got the time or desire to stick my nose that far out for a friend of a friend, but it seems like your kind of deal, Skinny. Hmm. It does seem like a bit of a stretch, but we have to wait for you to work on the data we've collected anyway. Yeah, we'll be happy to look into it. Alright, I'll, I'll pass word along you'll be in today to stick your nose in. And I'll send y'all word as soon as I get anything worth hunting down. Excellent, thank you, Tomcat. We are grateful for your continued assistance. Aw, uh, no problem, Turing. You sure you're gonna be okay? Maybe you should take a little more time. Skinny can probably handle this one solo. I said I was fine. Thank you for your concern, but I am fine. I process events faster than humans, and I do not need to be badgered. I have already handled the reality of Hayden's death. It's time to move on with the investigation. Okay, okay, didn't mean to lean on you, dear. Just... Let me know if you need anything. Of course. I apologize for my tone, Tomcat. We'll be in touch. Well, alright, later, Turing. Skinny. Okay, so we have a lead, however tenuous. I've highlighted the COS IO Corp buildings on your map. Oh, they make badass headphones. Also, while we were talking to Tomcat, I received an email from Dr. Fairlight. Displaying. Ah, greetings, Skinny. I hope you'll forgive me for a text-only message, but I had a moment of quiet while undergoing my treatments. I'm not presentable for a video call. Still, I wanted to let you know of an idea I had while looking into the circumstances of our mutual acquaintance's disappearance. I've not yet had any luck with my contacts inside Parallax, but I was reminded of an old friend of mine named Melody Flores. I wonder if she's related to Javier. There are so many parallels between this game, like, tenuous and, and only I'm, I'm, I mean me and, and fans who are watching this are picking these up, but there's so many connections between Mirror Shades and Swan Song in this game. It's like really funny coincidences. But I was reminded by an old friend by the name of Melody Flores who may, not know, who may know more about the nature of Hayden's research. She's the owner of Flower Cybernetics, and Hayden's been known to work closely with them on projects involving the intersection of parallel system, parallax systems, and the implants of flower designs. 
Now, I can't give you an introduction myself. Melody and I had a falling out. We're no longer on speaking terms. But perhaps the intrigue of Hayden's little robot will get you entry into her home. I hope this lead serves you well. If you need... Wait, he's, he got Southern there. <laughs> I hope this lead serves you well. If you need anything else from me, I'll be in the hospital room where we met for the next few days. You might not think of me as the type for a public hospital, but I like to keep close to the city. I'll send word if I have any other insights or discoveries. Your friend, Dr. Yannick Fairlight. Interesting. I had no knowledge of Hayden ever working with Flower Cybernetics, but I'm starting to understand how little I really knew about his research. Maybe this melody can reveal more about the purposes of my construction. Hayden must have kept my development secret for a reason. Hopefully we can talk our way in. I've highlighted Melody's home on your map. Okay, now we can either follow Tomcat's lead to KCOB or Fairlight's lead to Melody's home. Up to you where to go first. Hmm. 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 All right. Well, is my computer still broken? No. Poor computer. Turing has been withdrawn and anxious since the news of Aiden's death, despite trying to appear unfazed. I knew he was creating something. Someone so cool. Alright, yeah, let's get out of here. So we can go to KCOB or Flower Mansion. Let's go to Flower Mansion. Is there something something wrong? Oh, I'm sorry, Skinny. I was wool gathering. I see we've arrived at the Melody Flores residence. It's quite impressive, but that's to be expected, considering that she's still the majority owner of the Flower Cybernetics Group, despite retiring from day-to-day -day operations at the company. I wonder how she and Hayden began working together. Sorry, back on task. Is there anything you'd like to know before we head inside? Yeah, give me a rundown of Flower Cybernetics. Flower Cybernetics was established in the early 2000s by Melody's mother. It started out developing cutting-edge medical tech, including advanced prosthesis and nanoparticle diagnostic and treatment technology. They were vastly successful when they perfected the first synthetic nerve mesh, allowing direct com connection and control between nervous system and cybernetic prosthesis. The majority of their early projects were defense technologies for the American military, developing ruggedized military prosthesis for use on injured soldiers, and then eventually electively for special forces. This research line culminated in the development of brain-controlled androids as shock troops, long since barred by international law. Melody took over the company from her aging mother, and she fought against developing further military hardware from that point on. She pushed the company to use BCA technology for the company's original goals of medical advancement, as well as developing the first direct link virtual reality implants. The company is largely successful on a global scale despite continued legislative movements against extensive cybernetic use, especially brain implants. Okay. Well, what can you tell me about Melody? Hmm, not a whole lot. She's largely private in contrast to her mother's penchant, her mother's penchant for courting a media circus. Several biographies of former flower executive Shore is intensely passionate about demilitarizing the company to the point of absolute viciousness in the boardroom. But it's been a long time since her days of fighting for the company, and she's since stepped away from the helm. There's talk she lost her spine in her old age, but... Well, I'd take that with a grain of salt, Skinny. She may have retreated from the corporate battlefield, but you don't change the entire direction of a company as large as flower if you're a quitter. Stay on your toes. Hmm... Oh, I will see the ocean. Uh, sorry, I didn't notice your notification. Thank you. Welcome to Math Squad. I like your username. Didn't Yannick say he and Melody had a falling out? He did, and I can't shine much light on that. I did know that System 1 worked with Flower to help develop the first operating systems for the Direct Link virtual reality implants, so perhaps it happened during that time. Also, Flower eventually went with a different company for future models of the implant, but there was never any public talk of a personal falling out between the heads of the companies. I'll scrape the mesh for more rumors, but they'll only be that. Rumors. I can do my best to parse fact from fiction, but a blur is too much for me to sure, be sure what's real. Let's, just, let's go on in then. Windows line the front of the house. Huh. And broadcast the hints of an expertly designed den inside. A small scale bear statue guards the entrance to the museum. They'd look cuter if they had little outfits on. I agree. It could use a sweater and a tie. Maybe a little top hat. 
They're pretty bare otherwise. Good work. Good work, team. Right, I'm going to pour some milk on the statue. Oh, I can't. The statue's head is too big to fit them on. No sweet jams for bears. Listening to windows proves rather, rather melancholy. Leaves you with a lot to reflect on. Why? Why are the puns all of a sudden? Where did these come from? And where were they the rest of the game? This looks like the buzzer for an apartment complex. They need one of these just for the house? It's a literal bear. Uh, you know what? I don't even want to know. <laughs> is is that a is that a bear turing? Uh, it it appears so. Your guess is as good as mine, Skinny. Mine says we can go in. Should should we? Bear man. Konnichiwa, Kuma-san. Oh, swanky. It is swanky. To pay attention, Turing. Oh, Miss Flores, excuse us for the... Okay. Oh, I know who you are. Yannick isn't the only one with little birds to chirp in his ears. Curse him to the pit. Uh, um, we, we can explain. Oh, no. No, no, don't even start. If I thought you were Yannix, I would have had Pat here eat you both when you came in my door. He would have done it gladly, too. <laughs> Fine, not eating. He's on a diet, but perhaps a light mauling. Look, this philosophy is how I lead my life. Sometimes you eat the bar, and sometimes the bar, well, he eats you. This conversation really ties the room together. Well, stop lurking. Let's chat. I don't have all day to entertain you, Turing, nor your journalist friend. Not even for Hayden. You don't have time to waste if you're gonna find him either. Alright. The most regal looking robotic cat in the world sits prim and proper on the fainting chair. If it spoke any languages outside of robotic meows, it could probably trace its lineage back to the cradle of jungle cat civilization. Lily here is a model based on the Persian River Cat, one of the newest designer breeds to be put on the market. Their prized for their traditional Egyptian features, despite being more directly related to a Chinese breed. Melody keeps unusual company. Ursus Maritimus, if I'm not mistaken. That might be why the temperature controls are set so low here. Um, yeah, it's definitely a polar bear. I wasn't aware you knew the scientific name of the species, Skinny. Has my interest in proper nomenclature start to rub off on you? Uh, he's a, he's a white bear, Turing. What else could he be? Uh, plenty. Have you ever heard of a kermode bear, known also as a spirit bear? Or he could be a white-faced black bear, or even a pizzly. But he's not. It's a polar bear. Yep, definitely a polar bear. Unless she dyed his fur. Awesome. Wait, what's this? <gasps> the headphones are a. <sighs> oh my. Uh, mm, clever. That's an Easter egg I, I would never have like imagined to be there. That's very cute. A Rosie 893 unit, um, probably named after Rosie from Jetsons. Rosie units are designed to remain in sleep mode until reactivated only by its owner's voice. The latest episodes of Media Blitz is going into the sordid details of a new teen actor's island love affair with a local politician's daughter. A thin string of steam escapes the delicate spout. 
It's fairly likely you can request milk that isn't toxic. The biggest strawberries you've ever seen are assembled in a china bowl on the coffee table. These strawberries are genetically modified using the Flockhart method, altered most for aesthetic appearance. This is in contrast to the Borlaug method, where food is modified for greater crop yield and higher nutritional benefit. I'm all eat them. They look too good to eat. That might be the point. Oh, I want them. <gasps> Those are for Pat, not you. So her polar bear eats strawberries? Amazing. Bars. All right. Uh, let's. There's so much to look at. A large climate-controlled globe has some lively in-season plants inside. This is the best. This is the best plant we've seen in the game so far. Room control monitor. All right. I guess let's. Can we? Let's talk to Pat. So, uh, like, grr and stuff? Yeah, but like, does a bear sh You know, never mind. Pat, what are the burdens you bear? Just bear puns, just for days. Pat, what is the meaning of life? Uh, woof. <laughs> awesome. Can I talk to this cat? Remarkably bored at all attempts at a conversation. <laughs> alright, alright. You have me at a disadvantage, Miss Flores. You seem far more familiar with me than I you. Have we met? <sighs> it's just Melody, Turing. And no, we've never met, though considering how often Hayden harassed me for design schematics of Flower's latest neural implants, I might as well be your... Aunt? We'll go with that. I wouldn't mind being an aunt, even to a blue-headed robot. I'm touched, Melody. We were hoping you might be able to shine some light on my origins. Fairlight mentioned you'd worked with Hayden in the past. We haven't had access to any of his research notes, and couldn't track down any collaborators he might have been working with. Perhaps if we know more, we might be able to nail down a solid motive. Well, I don't know if I can speculate on that beyond typical corporate infighting. Not that Parallax is known for that, of course. Still, I'm willing to answer your questions, for now. How did you and Hayden end up working together on Turing? Indeed, I don't see that connection between your company and Hayden's research into Machine Sapiens. Oh, Hayden wasn't researching Machine Sapiens. At least not primarily. Not to diminish the importance of your creation, Turing, but Hayden is mainly interested in developing a way to transfer human consciousness into a machine matrix. So you can see why neural implants would obviously be an integral part of that. Oh, I didn't realize. Can you elaborate on your involvement? Pfft. Hayden and I have been aware of each other for years, but I can't say we've ever been friends or anything like that. It's a small city, and if you're in a tech sector, you're never more than two degrees removed from anywhere else. When he started looking at his pet project of his, he came right up to my door and demanded access to the research logs behind our earlier implants. Cheeky, but it was impactful and disruptive, as they like to say around here. He needed the logs to better understand the way the implant handled direct sensory data to the right parts of the brain, and tried to mimic that in your software. I couldn't care less about Flower's patents anymore, so I gave him what he wanted. Just to see what he would do. I'm frankly more impressed than I would be, but... Don't tell him I said that. Don't worry. The concept of transferring the human mind into a computer has been an attractive goal for decades. Functional immortality is... a powerful lure. The brain's an immensely complicated machine, and even though we know the right parts to push to make pictures show up, we can't replicate the entire thing as a technological construct. Even with virtual reality, implants are really just relying on the brain's ability to make sense of nonsensical signals. Implants just a signal pipe, and the brain does the real processing. That's why the, acclim the acclimation period for a direct link is being stuck on low-grade hallucinogens for a whole week. So Aiden decided the best way to make a machine more like the human would be to work in the opposite direction. Instead of mimicking the mechanics of the human brain, he started writing code that mimicked the functioning of the human mind, and assumed the architecture would suit both purposes. 
Think of it like convergent evolution. Two different species developing the same adaptation to solve the same problem, but continents apart. Hayden's a crack programmer when it comes to information collating. That's how he made his name in Parallax in the first place. So he wrote a bunch of baffling, self-modifying learning algorithms, set them loose. Poke and prod them here and there to make sure they value the same things human do and eventually end up with you, Turing. Interesting. Hayden never revealed any of this to me. I imagine he's pretty tight-lipped. You were the first prototype he considered a real success and he was afraid to contaminate your development before he had a chance to make good observations. Hayden wasn't invested in Turing's development. Well, I didn't say that. Dramatic music change. Hayden was quite interested in Turing, even if he's just a step to further research. I... In fact, he's preparing to publish his findings involving Turing. I know he's going to make one heck of a splash in the scientific community. See, the most impressive part about you, Turing, is that you're surprisingly stock. I assure you, Melody, my construction involves only the latest and greatest in ROM prototype technology. Exactly. You're not off the shelf, but you're still just a souped-up ROM. More or less like every other one out there. Your personality algorithms are impressive. They don't require some new space-age technology to work. Hayden's going to propose that human consciousness transference doesn't require special brain-like hardware, merely the right software wrapper to interface with that hardware. Much like how you function. I suppose that's correct. Still, my personality matrices do take up substantial amounts of my protesting power. Processing. <laughs> Wouldn't custom hardware have capabilities that better serve a demeaning specialized... such a demeaning specialized task? Well, sure, there's still plenty of reason trying to make a computer that works like a human brain. Efficiency is an important part of that. But if Hayden can emulate the human mind and existing technology, it means we can start with immortality now, rather than waiting for the hardware to catch up with Hayden's software. I'm not terribly interested in living forever, but there's more than enough people who are willing to make even a temporary stepping stone important. Thank you for this, Melody. I understand so little of my origins. I'm sorry, I don't know more of the specifics. Hayden kept me up to date on his progress, but only in the vaguest of ways. If you can hunt down his notes, I'm sure they'll tell you more. Of course, we'll keep looking. Now perhaps you can ask some other questions? Sure, sure. Oh, hell, that old bastard and I have been flashing daggers at each other for the better part of 20 years. I contracted out the software development or first-gen direct link VR neural implants to System 1. Things are going great, but after the first model sold like gangbusters, Yannick tried to get into bed with me. Literally. I turned him down, very politely I might add, and suddenly all the cooperation between our companies dried up. We've been at it back and forth ever since. I've been damn careful about trusting him if I was you. He's a snake, he'll do anything he can to get what he wants. Still. I suppose if he tried again now, I might not turn him down. It'd be fun to needle him about me having my own company when he doesn't have his. Can you tell us about yourself in Flower Cybernetics? That's why I don't talk to journalists. They all want to pry into my life. Can't you wait for my autobiography? I promise I'm working on it. Thank you, promise. We don't want to pressure you, Melody, but every bit of information we get could be useful for binding us, pointing us toward the individuals that attacked Hayden. All right, off the record? Of course. Is anything off the record when you are talking about it in front of a, um, a ro like a, a, a robot that records everything? Fine. Ask away. <laughs> what is the deal with Pat? <laughs> Pat's a prototype as well. Flower had a short-lived project that attempted to use neural implants to increase the cognitive power of non-human animals. Did you ever try it on an octopus? It worked to an extent. Pat's smarter than the average bear, but not by much. Oh, be quiet. After the project was squashed, mostly for being a money pit, Pat was the only surviving success story. The eggheads didn't know what to do with him, so I decided to keep him around here. He's not a bad companion if a tad taciturn. Give it up, Pat. You're no Shakespeare. How are you involved with the company today? <laughs> oh, I'm not. I mean, I still own the damn thing, but frankly, I'm tired. 
I let the current CEO and board do what they want, with the understanding I can shit can them if they do anything egregiously stupid, like say, create more cyborg assassin war machines. These days I spend my time talking to Pat and practicing my painting. You paint? What a coincidence, I love painting, what do you do? No, nothing fantastic. Still life, mostly. Never be known for my artistic skill, but I enjoy it. It's very meditative, isn't it? I agree. Very much. I look forward to when all of this is over and I can get back to my canvases. Would you mind taking a look at my work, since you're my aunt and all? <laughs> well, we can play a little. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. It's a date. Well, Mommy Dearest first started the company half a century ago and quickly let it turn from a cutting-edge medical research group into a Department of Defense Super Soldier Cyborg Factory. I took over when she got lymphoma and had to fight tooth and nail to turn flour into something that turned my guts a little less. Now we're back to making medical tech and consumer neural implants rather than brains inside tin cans with lasers strapped to the front. If the US government wants more war-grade cyborgs, they're gonna have to get them elsewhere, never mind them being banned by the Geneva Convention. I guess that's the gist of it, unless you want the sordid details of two decades of board meetings I had to fight through. That seems to line up with what the Mesh says. Well, I'm happy the Mesh managed to get something right, at least. I can get back to my retirement. Thank you for your time, Melody. We'll be in touch later. One more piece of information for you, if you'd like it. Got the contact info for a Vincent Mensa, who I think might be able to help you. Vincent was working more closely. There's another name that's in Vincent Pollard. There's so many name crossovers. <laughs> Vincent was working more closely with Hayden inside Parallax, mostly on his company-approved research on data collating algorithms for the mesh. I'll send him a message and ask him to meet you somewhere. He owes me a favor anyway. I might be able to give you some more information on anything else Hayden might have been working on. That'd be fantastic, Melody. Thank you. Perhaps Golden Gate Park? That's public and crowded for the safety of us all. That should work. Be careful out there, Turing. I'd hate to see this get you killed. I will exercise caution, Melody, but I have contacts that can affect any repairs I may need. Oh, you don't understand. Hayden's designed user base hardware configuration to generate your core personality profile. Each repair will make the little, idiosyncra little idiosyncrasies of your hardware mismatched against your personality algorithms. Too much change and the whole thing collapses. Had to be rebooted from scratch. So I'm sorry to say, you're as mortal as the rest of us, Turing. I... I, I didn't know. Yeah, I can tell. You really need to get your hands on Hayden's files. There's plenty I don't know, so maybe I'm wrong. I only remember some of what Hayden told me about how he put you together. Just look out for yourself. I will, thank you. Alright. Leave Melody Mansion. Alright. So it's about time for a break. We're actually a little over. So let's... Let's pause here. And we'll pick up more after the break.